Ah, my mother, Winnie, Winifred. Yeah. I love that picture of her. I think my dad loved that picture of her. <laughs> now, this is a, a presentation my mother did uh, in her senior years. She was a member of the Thorncliffe Greenview Seniors Group. She was instrumental there. She was secretary and uh, probably president at some time. And uh, so she was uh, really loved the people there, formed great friendships it's in our neighborhood. And members of the seniors group were invited to talk about their life, a little bi biography. And luckily, I was able to video record my mother on this, so it's about two and a half minutes long. Shoot. My mother's maiden name was Sarah Isabella Atchison. She was born in Clinton, Ontario. She came from a family of four girls and three boys. My grandfather, Alexander Atchison, a teacher, founded the village of Rosenfeld, Manitoba in 1892. A 1910 map of Rosenfeld shows all the streets are named after members of the Atchison family. Londonderry and Donegal, Ireland, were the birthplaces of my mother's parents. My mother and her three sisters attended public school in Rosenfeld and then the convent St. Jean Baptist, St. Jean, Manitoba. Today, June the 24th, the St. Jean the Baptist Day. Mom then attended business college in Winnipeg, graduating from the Winnipeg Business College in 1902. My dad was born in Alsace, Lorraine, France, and came to Hanover, Ontario as a baby, the youngest of seven children. He came to Rosenthal as a green buyer in the early 1900s. An avid lacrosse player, he played with the Suarez lacrosse team, who won the Manitoba Championship in 1905. Mom and Dad were married in Rosenthal December 5, 1909. I was born August 11, 1911, the oldest of eight children, five girls and three boys. From Rosenthal to Winnipeg in 1918, to Calgary in 1923. We all loved Calgary with its hills, mountains, and Chinooks. Winnipeg was so cold in the winter, and so hot in the summer, and so very flat. Educating eight children in the 1920s and 30s was no challenge, no small challenge. I graduated from Jarvis <laughs> Business College in 1927 and entered the workforce with a firm working for a firm of lawyers, Peacock, Steen and Peacock, for $30 a month. In the very 30s, the Depression was very evident and I was lucky to have a job. The Weber family survived. There are so many happy memories of the warmth and kindness of neighbors who were all in the same boat, poor. In order to have a phone, you had to be in business. My dad was in the decorating and painting business, so we had a phone and a car, an old McLaughlin Buick touring car with eyes and glass curtains. We shared both car and phone with all neighbors. We never locked our doors. Mrs. O'Brien, who lived across the road from us, really appreciated both car and phone, and she had nine children during her residence at 2302 16th Street Southwest. I met Albert Benedict in 1930 through a school chum. He was from a family of six boys and two girls. His father came to Calgary in 1893 from Wallsburg, Ontario, and his mother, Agnes McDowell, came to Calgary from Frank, B.C., with her family, survivors of the 1903 Frank, Frank slide. I was 18, going on 19, Albert was 20, going on 21. Every Saturday night, the young people in our district would attend the dances at St. Mark's Masonic Hall in South Calgary. We all decided to form a social club. The Ryan Club was formed with a membership of over 100. We eventually rented the top floor of the Northwest Travelers Building on 6th Avenue and 1st Street East for $20 per month, which included heat, light, and elevator service. As the elevator was out of commission, we walked up three flights of stairs. <coughs> we had our own orchestra, drama club, hockey team, held elections every year. Uh, a lot of lasting friendships were formed, and a great number of marriages resulted. Albert and I were married in Scarborough United Church on April 18, 1935. A dance and reception followed, attended by all members of the families, neighbors, and friends. Albert was a printer and worked for Central Press Company, a company established from Calgary in 1902. In 1946, he purchased the plant, and I became a binder girl, bookkeeper, etc. Our marriage lasted 48 and a half years. 
Albert passed away July 5, 1983, 73 years of age. We had three children of whom we were very proud. Marion, born 1936, a graduate of, graduate of the General Hospital of Nursing. Jim, born 1944, a graduate of the University of Alberta in Electrical Engineering. And Lauren, born 1949, graduated, graduate of the University of Calgary, Bachelor of Science and Teacher. Six grandchildren, seven great-grandchildren. My two daughters-in-law and a son-in-law, Joan and Louise and Bill, are very dear to me. I am very fortunate to have such a loving and caring family. I have lived in Rosenfeld, Winnipeg, and Calgary. Occupation Land Secretary. Date retired, pending, waiting for my pension. <laughs> So, now i got to tell a little story on grandfather. She talked about uh, the moving out from Winnipeg to Calgary and, and the struggles, and I told you about the two Bs and the one B and so on. Granddad was a drinker. Yeah, well, he's from Alsace, France. What do you expect? So, they were living in a small community got married and lived in a small community in Rosenfeld, Manitoba, and there's a book on the table there, and the first three were born there. And then they couldn't afford to stay there any longer, so they moved to Winnipeg, where uh, grandfather tried to carry on with the business there. But again, he'd drink away any of the money that they had. You saw the, the milk bottle story. So while he was at the bar, Business networking, building leads, relationships, contracts coming up, of course. The big deal is just around the corner. Talking to the guys, they said, young man, your opportunities are west of here. You want to make a living? You got to go out west. Well, where? Well, Seattle or Calgary? Our golden opportunities. Great, he says. That's what I'm going to do. So he goes back home to Grandma, Sadie, and says, Dear, I'm going to make my fortune out west. I'm going to head out one of these two spots, and I'll call for the family when, when I hit the jackpot. Okay. Well, where are you going? Seattle or Calgary? One of the two. At which point, the girls in the family, so my mom, Gert, Edna, um, Mildred, gathered around and said, we got to figure out where we're going. We got to sort out where this is. We got to tell our dad the best place to go. What are we going to do? One of them said, let's take the Ouija board out of the closet. <laughs> and that's what they did sat around and the girls worked it out. C A L no pushing. G Dad, you're going to Calgary. He says, I'm buying a train ticket now. So he gets the train ticket and off he goes on the CPR, arrives in Calgary. And looking at the first watering hole so he can do business networking. <laughs> building the relationships and the like. It's not working out quite as well as he thought he would. So he's starting to run low on cash. So he goes to the telegraph office and he sends a telegraph back home to Sadie saying, the prospects are looking excellent here. I'm just about there. I just need a little more money. Can you send me some money? So she's says, oh, i got to do something. So she scrounges around. I don't know where she gets the money. She gets together $40. She goes to the telegraph office, and she sends him the money. So he goes to the telegraph office. He receives the telegraph. It's for $400. The telegraph operator had made a mistake. You think, somebody died in the family. We got money. He telegraphs back right away. He says, pack up the family and come on to Calgary. We're going to do it. So that's how the family went from Winnipeg 
and ended up in Calgary. And that's where our Weber family carried on from there, thanks to a little telegraph mistake. Granddad didn't change his habits, but he brought us all together again. So I want to leave you with uh, a parting thought. So Ethan, one more. Thank you.